Hey guys, Scott here, and in tradition with all of the new chapters with Dead by Daylight, I usually have two videos. The first one is going over the new perks, and then the next one is going over the killer itself because I need more time to actually play them. But I thought it would do a little differently this time, and we're going to go over the perks and the actual patch notes because there were a number of notable changes in the patch notes as well that I think are uh, good enough to discuss. Also, you can see here, this is a very sad excuse for a microphone. Unfortunately, my mic stand broke, and it fell and broke my Shure SM7B, so... Rest in peace to something that's served me for five years. I'm using this jank guitar recording microphone, which is honestly pretty good. It's a sure mic, but it doesn't have like pop protection or like anti that stuff. So sorry about the worst quality for this video in particular. I should have my new mic in a couple of days. Um, in the meantime, let's go over his actual perks and then we'll go over Gabriel Somo's perks and uh, we'll go over who won. It was Survivor, <laughs> Survivor won from what I've seen so far. Uh, so first off, genetic limits. Around you, the limits of human life become readily apparent. When a survivor finishes the healing action, they suffer from exhaustion for 32 seconds. Um, I don't know. I, I think with Dead Hard being pretty significantly nerfed, exhaustion, while still extremely strong and one of the strongest type of perks you can bring, the overall effect of making survivors exhausted is not quite as impactful. And this is fairly reliant on a specific scenario where they are healed or they're healing somebody. And then they are chased as well. Now, I can understand that if you're maybe healing somebody and then the killer chooses to not go for the person that you were healing, in which case you would be exhausted for pretty much that entire chase, which could be good. Is that worthy of using? I could see maybe comboing it with like Mindbreaker or something like that. Um, Fearmonger, whatever you want to call it now, um, which is the Demogorgon perk that, or I guess generic perk now that makes it so when you touch a gen, you're blinded and exhausted very briefly. So this will make that exhaustion stay on for a long time. So you could definitely combo those two. I can see some combos working there. Um, will it be strong enough to be meta? I don't think so, but it's not a bad perk. It's just not really amazing. Uh, forced hesitation. When a survivor is put in the dying state by any means, all other survivors standing within 16 meter range uh, around them suffer from the hindered status effect for 10 seconds, reducing their movement speed by 15%. Then it goes on cooldown for 40 seconds. Now, a 15% hinder is absolutely massive. That is a huge, huge amount of slowdown. That's like being in clown's gas. That's an extremely high amount of slowdown. However, this is a really, really niche scenario. You need to have people within 16 meters, which is tier 2 Myers to radius, by the way. It's a very, very small radius. Um, and then they get hindered for 10 seconds. So what this basically means is when you down someone, you have to slug them to get value in the next 10 seconds of someone that's going to be significantly slower. Don't get me wrong. If someone's like hanging around for a flashlight save or something like that, this will absolutely destroy them and you're almost guaranteed to get a hit because 15% slower is extremely noticeable. So that is uh, where the scenario will be good. But other than that, I can't really think of too many scenarios where this is really going to be that useful because 16 meters is such a small radius. And also you have to slug because if you don't, if you just down the survivor and pick them up, what is it going to do? Maybe stop someone from running in for a flashlight save, assuming they don't have background player. That's pretty much all I can really think of there. So the idea uh, or the actual effect of the perk, the actual slowdown is massive, but Due to the radius and the cooldown and the duration, you basically, it's one scenario where you down someone, you have to slug them and someone else is nearby and you know where that person is and then you chase them and you probably will get a hit off of it. It seems too situational to be very good in my opinion. Um, but if you don't like flashlight saves, it definitely will make uh, make it harder for people to get in position. So I guess you have that. I would still prefer something like Infectious Fright if you don't want to get flashlight saved because no one's running Calm Spirit and you can just go ahead and see where people are that are trying to save and just look in a different direction so that's going to be a lot better in my opinion uh lastly we have machine learning it says a bunch of text on it basically when you kick a generator then the generator will become compromised when that generator becomes completed then you get seven percent haste for 30 seconds and become undetectable now seven percent haste on killer and 30 seconds of undetectable are absolutely massive they are really 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 strong uh seven percent haste is huge but again, it's kind of a niche scenario where you're only going to get to use this a set number of times. And if you don't get the value in those 30 seconds, you essentially just don't have a perk there. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I think I could see this being fairly useful in a couple of killers like Leatherface, for example. I think I could see this being pretty useful when the generator that you've compromised is completed. Getting a massive haste boost and also becoming undetectable might allow you to ambush people pretty easily. Uh, because 30 seconds is a pretty decent amount of time, um, especially to have 7% haste. So that would help a killer like Bubba get like a quick assassination. I can think of a couple of other scenarios where it actually might be um, decently useful. You can combo with other gen kick perks as well and try to get something going off of that. 
Um, but for the most part, are any of these perks really meta or going to be a mainstay on any killer's build like Corrupt Intervention or Pop, which was newly buffed, or Pain Residence or anything? Nah, I, I don't think so. They're all just wonderfully average perks, in my opinion. I think they're just okay. There's a couple of niche scenarios where I think they could be pretty useful, but for the most part, too niche and eh, I don't know. I'll definitely try to use them uh, as I play the Singularity today. But I don't see these things becoming meta really in any way. Um, however, let's go look at the new survivor's perks, Gabriel Soma. And uh, yeah, he does have some perks that I would definitely consider meta. Uh, first off is Troubleshooter. When you're chased by the killer, Troubleshooter activates to see the aura of the generator with the most progress. And you see the aura of the killer for six seconds after dropping a pallet. Now, I believe the way this is worded, this will only work or it'll only work once in a chase. Um, so when you drop a pallet for six seconds, you see the uh, killer's aura and then that's pretty much all it's going to last for that chase. So it's going to give you one free wall hack after you drop a pallet from what I understand from this. The effect lasts for 10 seconds after being in chase and then deactivates. Right. So if you're still in that chase, then it should be deactivated, in which point then it's not going to give you value for that chase anymore. Um, but other than that, I think that is pretty decent because having a on the fly, like for very unsafe pallets, where there's like, you know, a shelter woods rock loop or something like that, where you're going to have a line of sight break, you drop the pallet and run around, you're going to be able to track exactly where the killer is. And it's going to be really hard for them to outplay that pallet for the next six seconds. So that can save you a lot of time. It can also let you know when to leave the loop. If you see them doubling back, you can actually just try leaving and knowing when to leave a loop at the exact perfect time, because you can see the killer is pretty impactful and on maps with chain tiles will be very, very useful. So I can see that being decently useful. I'm still a little unclear. I might be wrong on how this deactivates and I'd have to try it in game myself. Um, but I think that's how it should work. I think that makes sense because it's not going to be giving you aura rating every time you drop a pallet because that will be insanely busted. Um, but yeah, I think that perk is pretty decent. Uh, made for this. Here's where I start worrying because I've always said that movement speed is like it's very central to Dead by Daylight's balance. And that's why perks that affect your movement speed are usually uh, very, very niche scenarios. Hope you have to be at endgame. The perk I just went over on the singularity, um, they have to be, you know, it, you, there's a lot of requirements to get that specific scenario going on. Um, play with your food. You have to start a chase and then end it and then you lose a token as soon as you swing. So movement speed has always been a very, very scary thing to tinker with, which is why perks like Boon Dark Theory have very, very minor amounts on them. Um, but for Dark Theory, it's fine because it's a Hex Totem, or it's a, it's a Boon Totem, and it's, you have to be in the area, so it ends up really, honestly, probably not even being good enough. But this, the requirement is just, you're just injured. You're going to get injured in basically every single game you play. And being able to run 3% faster, while it doesn't seem very much, because your hitbox is smaller, you can round corners better than killers, and a 3% difference in speed is fairly noticeable. If you ever tried chasing someone as Huntress, compared to chasing them as a regular killer, you'll know even a 5% difference in movement speed is extremely noticeable. So that is, in my opinion, very scary. There's also a bonus effect on it for some reason, where after you finish healing another survivor, you gain endurance for 10 seconds. Um, so if you are injured and you heal someone else, now it's going to be kind of hard for the killer to determine which they should go for, because the person that just got healed, well, they're healed, so not, they're not going to get one hit down. And the person that's doing the healing, they might have this perk and they're not going to get one hit down. So that puts like a really hard situation on the killer. Um, the movement speed just, it could literally, the perk could just be moving 3% faster while injured. That's insanely good by itself. You don't need anything more than that. That's already extremely good perk. Uh, but then the fact that it has a bonus on top of this too. Now it does say it cannot be used when you're exhausted, but it doesn't cause exhaustion. So there will be a scenario where if you are in a chase and injured and you choose to use your life or something, then you forego this, which is, I guess, the only saving grace in terms of this being wildly overpowered. So you can't combo it super well with exhaustion perks. Um, but it does still work with things like Dead Hard and things that you can activate when you want to. So you can hold that speed burst or that speed bonus as long as you want and then use your exhaustion perk when it's necessary to not go down. So overall, I do think this perk is probably too strong honestly one or the other like the fact that it has two pretty decent effects by itself is pretty insane um so that perk i think is a bit too strong i'm not sure how to tweak it exactly i would make it just one or the other honestly but um i think that does too much it's just too much it's, it's not like power creep at that point it's just too much scavenger this perk is wildly overpowered i'm just saying that this perk is way too strong 
So what this does, whenever you hit four great skill checks on a generator, your toolbox is just replenished. Now it only happens once. Um, and you can say, well, something like built to last can do the same thing, but more than once, it's not really, you can't do it. Like you can do it multiple times, but it gets reduced by 33% every time. And eventually it gets to the point after you've used it basically once that the time saved from spending the time in the locker ends up equating to the time saved by using the toolbox. So it ends up, eh, it's not that big of a deal. But this, you don't lose any time. You're just doing a generator and then your toolbox just replenishes by itself. Um, that is insanely strong, essentially giving people two commodious toolboxes with wire spool and uh, screws and stuff. That is, in my opinion, too strong. That is going to give everyone double the toolboxes with zero cost. You just get it. And even if you don't have a toolbox in the match, you can rummage for one and just get one. So you still get value from the perk. I think this is too strong. I don't really know exactly how to balance it right now. Um, maybe it restores 50% of your toolbox or something like that, or it takes way more tokens. So you need to actually like repair a generator for a long time to get it. But the problem is it's self synergistic with itself because when you have a toolbox, you get way more skill checks. So you're going to get a ton of skill checks. You're going to get those four very fast when you have a toolbox. That's why the hyper focus build is so good with the toolbox because it gives you more skill checks. So this is going to give you way more skill checks, which will in turn feed the perk to give you a toolbox that gives you more skill checks. So it's, yeah, that hyper focus, like, oh God, I can think of disgusting builds with this. So, and then you can even throw build to last on top of it as well and recharge it like four times. So I think that perk is way too strong. I really don't want to see the perk come to this like live. It's, it's very rare that I just straight up say that like a, a perk is way too strong, but this shit is too strong. It needs to be nerfed. That's ridiculous. That's way, way too good. Um, this, I think, is too good as well. This is whatever. So these two are significantly meta perks that will be uh, absolutely S tier on basically everybody uh, as long as they ship as they currently are. And the Singularities perks are just sort of meh. So definitely very um, survivor-sided on the perks this time. It does go back and forth. We usually have killer-sided ones, then survivor-sided ones, then killer, then survivor. Um, this is definitely a survivor-sided patch in terms of the perks itself. Uh, now let's go on to the actual patch notes, uh, which are interesting because they tweaked a bunch of stuff I didn't think they'd actually tweak. For the artists, we got a couple of add-on changes, which are not really that insane, just very minor things. Uh, again, Nemesis didn't have too many crazy things either. Just a bit more slowdown on one of those add-ons. Um, Zombie Heart is probably going to be a bit more useful now because ever since Marvin's Blood was nerfed, getting to... Stage two for Nemesis usually was a bit harder. So this got a 25% buff when breaking uh, zombies down for some infection or for some uh, power up there, which is pretty good. Um, and then also Tyrant Gore does the same thing. Um, and it also has the other effect because it's basically just a higher end version of that add-on. Um, then Trickster just had a little minor 0.1 second buff per knife hit in main event. It's whatever. Not a big deal. Now Ghostface got a pretty sizable buff. He got a 0.2 meters a second increase to his movement speed while crouch, which is a lot. That's actually pretty significant. He's now barely slower than a survivor while crouching. Uh, Night Shroud also had a free four second reduction cooldown, which is always going to be great for Ghostface. And also the Killer Instinct when you revealed has been increased by two seconds as well. So just straight up buffs for Ghostface across the board. Um, I didn't expect Ghostface to get buffs before a lot of other killers, but I guess these are pretty simple numerical changes. So I'm glad to see that. Um, also, your Terradius is reduced by 12 meters instead of eight while crouching with the knife belt clip. And then the Night Vision Monocular, a survivor that reveals the ghost faces inflicted with exhaustion for 10 seconds was 5 seconds. So just overall across the board, base kit and add-on changes for the ghost face to just simply make him stronger, which I'm sure ghost face fans will be happy about. He's not exactly overpowered to where these are a problem, but he wasn't so weak that I found that he needed changes before like Trapper or something. So definitely uh, strange, but not unwelcome. This is huge, huge, huge. Uh, Pyramid Head now inflicts torment on people he gets with his power, just straight up which I'm a little concerned about because Pyramid Head has always been the best tunneler and camper in the entire, well, not camper, I guess tunneler in the entire game um, because every anti-tunnel perk doesn't work against Pyramid Head. You can also basically camp someone in a cage because you just, you can't be within five meters of the cage, but you can stand right outside and you'll be just fine. So you can essentially sit in range of your power with range add-ons and still camp someone out of a cage. So it he's still very good at doing that. And I think because now everyone will be tormented basically all the time now, yeah, I am a, a little concerned that he will get even stronger at tunneling right now, which I'm definitely uh, not looking forward to. I think that's a really nice quality of life change, but I do not like the side effect that's going to happen where he's just undoubtedly going to be very, very strong at tunneling, even more so than he currently is, because now it'll be that much easier to get people tormented. 
a lot of survivors know how to play against Pyramid Head to avoid getting tormented. Even if they get downed, they can usually prevent actually getting tormented. But now, you can't really prevent it. You're pretty much always going to get tormented. So, yeah, that could be a problem. Uh, we'll see how that goes, but that could be a problem. Uh, Pop Goes the Weasel was finally buffed to 30% of current progress, which is very welcome. It did not need the nerf. It went from total to current progress, which is a massive nerf. Uh, but getting 30%, that's a, that's a pretty sizable increase. I would still prefer 20% of total progress rather than 30% of current, but that's way better than it used to be. So Pop, I think, is back to being a pretty damn decent perk. Uh, Deja Vu now has gotten a pretty significant change. Um, so what they did was it now reveals three auras which are in close proximity to one another, but it does it indefinitely. So for the entire match, you're going to see where your three gen is at the start and doing those generators, you repair them 6% faster. So you're going to have a view of your three gen the entire game, and you're going to know where you can try to prevent that from happening. However, if a killer wants to commit to a three gen, it doesn't do anything. The fact that you know where it is, the killer also knows where it is, and they're still going to play around it. So in essence, this doesn't really change much. If a killer wants to play a three gen, they're still going to do it. You're just going to know where the end of the match is going to take place now, which is okay, I guess. They need to actually try to address the actual fact that a killer can hold that three gen rather than we see where it is, but I still can't do anything about it. So, but I will say three gens have been way less prevalent lately, ever since they nerfed like Call of Brian and Eruption and Overcharge and things like that. Um, there's only a handful of killers that can hold it super well now, Skull Merchant being one of them. And for the most part, it's not as big of a problem as it used to be. So that's uh, sort of whatever. Also got a 1% increase in repair speed, but that's whatever. Not a big deal. Uh, flashbang, you can actually, ha you can craft a flashbang and back up while you have another item now, which is great. I do love that change. Um, no complaints there. I love flashbang. It's a good perk. And we finally got the search bar and um, there's also new item categories, things like that. And uh, other than that, there's uh, not much. A couple of bug fixes. But overall, the patch was uh, pretty interesting. I would say they got a decent amount of kind of cool changes. Definitely a lot of unexpected ones and perhaps some mildly problematic ones. We'll see. Uh, but for the most part, patch is pretty decent. Um, now, the next video will be about the killer and the new map, which from what I've seen the map, oh god, it's not good. <laughs> I kind of figured it was not going to be good. But for the most part, I am uh, excited to play the Singularity. I've heard from people that are pretty jaded with the game that he's actually decently fun to play. So we'll see how it goes. But that is it for the perk and patch review. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video for the Singularity. What is going on down there? Oh my god. I forgot I had my Twitch chat. <laughs> I forgot I had my Twitch chat on in this screen. <laughs> I'm not streaming right now, but someone's just spamming the Joel spinning fish. <laughs>